a simple oscillator that always works in the range of say uh, 18 kilohertz up to 30 kilohertz. The waveform is not very pure. You can see that here 24 kilohertz at the moment and I've used here this coil. coil. It's a toroid coil and I have um, I took up one of the windings, soldered one wire to it and then we have of course a figuration that looks like this. B, A and C when it doesn't oscillate reverse A and B. That was a very peculiar uh, moment when I tested it. This worked when all these windings were in this way but this did not work when the windings were soldered in this way. So, quite strange, perhaps I had to do more experiments, but anyway, when something works, that's very okay. Something to take in account, by the way. And of course, you can also use this circuit to drive a high voltage transformer, flyback transformer. That works even very properly. Of course, be very careful with the high voltages on the secondary. Very, very careful. Don't charge high value uh, capacitors via a diode circuit. That can be lethal anyway. And I don't publish that circuit by purpose because it's not very say uh, safe anyway the windings again the circuit and I've used here two transistors that can handle a lot at first the BD139 can handle 80 volts between uh, say on its base base collector voltage that's a very good property and here a typical high voltage transistor that was used many times in old school television circuits the 2SC2625 uh, pin connections here of course when you want to take uh, power out of it uh, solder it or solder it and mount it on a heatsink perhaps even the BD-139 anyway. The coil is here, it has a white core and I took it out of an old computer uh, power supply. You can find these coils. But in fact with this circuit it is so very universal that you can use any kind of coil. For instance even with such a coil, home wound it will work on a ferrite rod. That's by the way advised. Use a ferrite rod but, but even without a ferrite rod and a pro proper inductance not too uh, low it can work. And of course when you uh, change the transistors to um, other types of transistors say with a better amplification. Now it is 10 for this transistor and for this it is 150. But when you for instance use other types of transistors and other coils you will more or less sure, surely always have success. That it oscillates, at least it oscillates. And that's important for more experiments, insights, etc, etc. 24 kilohertz waveform driven by 4.8 volts takes approximately 200 milliampere. So let's look what happens when we drive up the voltage to this circuit. These transistors 
are able to handle that higher voltage. Don't do this with transistors that are no power types. In such a case you will see them uh, burn out. But these are power transistors, high voltage power transistors, this one, this one not a typical high voltage power transistor, but anyway it can handle a lot. So let's look what happens. Drive the voltage up to 12 volts, let's see. Twelve volts takes one ampere at twelve volts, working on eighteen kilohertz. And when we look at the scope, we can study the waveform. Uh, it's far beyond the range of the scope. So a lot of voltage is generated, 17 kilohertz. Anyway, um, that was more or less all to tell. Um, you can use it with small voltages and higher voltages and higher currents anyway. It's a quite successful circuit that uh, more or less always will work. And again, when it doesn't want to oscillate, reverse A and B or B and A. And when you use it with this high voltage transformer, exactly the same, you will you see here all kinds of electrodes, so you can choose here what coil you want to use. And of course we see here a coil um, with a tap exactly in the middle. And sometimes these coils on the primary of the high voltage uh, transformer don't have the tap exactly in the middle, but anyway even with the tap not exactly in the middle, it will oscillate. That was more or less all to tell. It's a resonant circuit, self-resonant. Every change here in capacitance, inductance, the length of the wiring, uh, perhaps even the supply capacitor, etc, etc, can change the frequency. But in general, this coil sets the frequency where it all works, and when you want to go to a lower frequency, connect here between this location A and B, say a capacitor of 100 picofarad, or 200 picofarad. That could help to bring the frequency down and could also correct the waveform in a certain way. Could be useful. 